In this video, I'm actually not going to be looking at my wins, which I had $1,420 of profit today. So a good green day. I'm happy with it, but I thought that I made some pretty big errors and I wanted to go over them. Well, it would be more beneficial to me and everybody else to just take a look at these mistakes, reflect on them, talk about it, think about what I could have done better, some mentality flaws that I had, and uh, hopefully in the future, those mistakes won't happen. That's what trading is all about, just getting a little better each day. You mess up, admit to it, talk about it, and move on. So that's what this video is. I hope you enjoy it. Like and subscribe, I'd appreciate it. And let's get on to the video. I wanted to go over ESEA, which was an earnings winner. So if you look at this, it's a former runner. It's capable of making big spikes. It's very sold off, but even in the sold off range, you can see it likes to have days where it'll go from 230 to 380. You know, it can just go multiple dollars. So I was looking at it today because it was an earnings winner and if you double click on stocks to trade I've got uh, the news right here I open all right so they had earnings of 17 cents a share they beat the estimate by 53 cents and not just that it is in the green so it's positive earnings right the projection or uh, the estimate was negative they beat it and they're positive so I knew right away this was going to be a huge watch because, you know, a former runner that crushes earnings like this, that's uh, that's a that's something to watch. That's about as far as I go into fundamentals, but I do pay attention to the earnings reports when they do come out. And I bought it right here at 292. I was watching it. The level 2 was developing. And I decided to jump in 500 shares at 292 to get a pop to the 320s. I was really hoping that it would hold the 320s and just start ripping and give me a big enough cushion to where I wouldn't get stopped out. And it did come down on me and I just... Uh, I'm just I, I'm so unfamiliar with pre-market trading because when you buy something you have to buy it when at times there's not much structure underneath your buy so you're kind of just guessing and hoping uh, that it doesn't just sell off on you because you really don't have any support under you under you uh, to catch you if you fall and so uh, this is just one of those cases where I just I just sold it because I didn't want that extra risk. Um, my thought process, well, it was at 240, and then it gapped up 50 cents per. So I was just thinking, okay, well, if it fails, it could easily just crash back into the 260s or 250s even, and then I'm starting the day with a $200 loss or something like that. So I decided to cut it for a $20 win. And uh, I was too nervous to enter it again. But I will say that it, it developed in a way that, that I should have most certainly re-entered. Because it double bottoms at 288 so it holds the 280s so that threat kind of got taken care of and then it changes trend with a VWAP reclaim I had one two three minutes where I could have entered it and it the entry range starts at 298 and peaks at 310 so you have three minutes and a 10 cent range to get involved. That was it. Okay, this is the entry that I needed to take and I did not take it because I felt defeated after my first failed play at uh, 8.37 a.m. 
which turned out to be pretty brutal because I watched it just explode up to 413 and uh, then after market open spiked into a halt and it peaked at 510. I believe if I had entered it here and uh, I believe I would have just locked up a dollar a share. So regardless, I mean, you're looking at $500 that I just threw away basically because I entered before proper development. I'm not going to say it was a bad entry because sometimes in pre-market, these things do just go straight up uh, from the first go. I'm not going to give myself hate for the first play. I will give myself hate for not re-entering though. That was just not uh, appropriate. My job as a day trader to keep an eye on this thing, and once it develops, time to get back involved, and I blew it. So that's just me not doing my job, and it cost me about $500. So that's just uh, that's a mistake. So the other play that I wanted to talk about was GRNQ, which was a... Really interesting play. All right, so Green Pro Capital signs letter of intent to acquire 18%. Okay, so uh, that news made it basically go straight up. Goes from 50 cents to a dollar 37. It washes out. On day two, it holds a nice horizontal range all day, and then it makes a run into close. So that's very interesting. Just trying to think if there was an entry on day two or not. It's not something I usually see. I suppose I could have taken an entry around 77, anticipating the high of day test, and then only swing it if I get the high of day breakout, which it did break out before close, which would be confirmation that you could swing it. I don't know. It's not really something I play very often, so I can't really say with certainty how optimal or not that is, I have no data on that, but uh, makes a nice run, closes at a dollar six, and then in pre-market, it ends up ripping 240. Pulls back, this is where I feel dumb really for not playing this today. Because it did set up in a way that I really, really liked. I felt like it was overextended because I watched it go from 50 cents to $2.40, right? So in my head, I'm thinking the play's over. It just had a spectacular run, but it's just washing now and it's over. So I was too quick to throw it away mentally. I threw it away out of my head as as if uh, just can't do it. But uh, you gotta you gotta keep those biases away. It's not good to get biased because this really did form some proper development that was nowhere to be found. Possible entry I see is here. Once it holds. Possible entry in this area. Once it shows that it's popping, it's kind of tricky, but I suppose the trend change in this area, and then once it's testing the key horizontal level of 150, once it breaks down, quick recovery, there's an entry here as well. So depending on what you like to do and what you like to risk, I see multiple different entry zones. 
if you're into waiting for VWAP reclaim, and that's just something you do. And there's this trend change here. Okay, so there's really there's multiple different strategies and entries that you could play on this. Bottom line is I should have gotten involved in this and I didn't. So that's a big mistake on my part. You can see that the volumetric analysis was calling for a play. When you get volume that is this clean, you have to look for entry. You just have to. Or not necessarily entry, but you need to look for the confirmation because this is trying to tell you something. Just a good reminder for me that these plays can do things that uh, you might not expect. So instead of just writing it off like it's impossible, you should get prepared for it and play it. Because the risk reward was there, the structure was there, everything was there, and I just ignored it. So. Here's a dip buy play, which I didn't get involved in. Looks like around 189 entry. Straight upside to the 220s. Probably sell around 215. So that's just a scalp play. Still very good though. This was very choppy. You could basically scalp any of these developments if that is something that you specialize in. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this uh, buying it up here if you don't have experience with chop. But I think you can clearly see the volatility, the volume, the range. It's all very, very good for potential trades. So, I mean, I just wanted to go over my mistakes today. So in the morning, ESEA, I got involved too early, burnt myself out on it before the development was really there. And then once it developed, I watched it instead of playing, instead of played it. And then on GRNQ, I thought that it was over when it was telling me it wasn't over. And instead of listening to the information that was presented to me and making a logical decision, I decided to stick with my emotional bias towards the ticker. So those were two mistakes that I really needed to review. The wins, they were just my normal scalps. Nothing special, nothing that I even want to go over, to be honest. Just, just, I don't even want to go over my wins today. Just seeing so many things run and not really capturing it. Uh, that's really what I wanted to make this video about. So, uh, thanks for watching. If you liked it, you can like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.